Do you think two single people of the opposite sex in India can remain friends because generally the guy... <laughs> Because generally the guy always screws up. Why are guys in two extremes either really clingy or really emotionally stunted? Ah, uh, how to approach an older girl. Okay, one guy. Hmm. These are some good questions, by the way. I was reading these questions out to my wife and she was like, yo, these are some good questions people have asked you. So why is it so difficult for men to admit it's either going somewhere or it's not? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kill this. Ready? Num num. Birdie Num Num. Birdie Num Num. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Birdie Num Num podcast. Sanjay Manangtala here, having a good week, and I hope you guys are having a good week. And I hope you're having an even better week after this because you guys and ladies, actually, you ladies mainly, have messaged me when I asked you on the Instagram, on the IG, about what's up with Indian men. Yes, in today's podcast, we are going to talk all about dating in India, because you guys resonate a lot of times when we talk about that. So I am going ahead and giving you what you want. So uh, I took some polls this week uh, on Instagram, asked about three or 4,000 of you, I think, who at least saw the story. And we got about 20 messages. So I'm going to try to get through a bunch of them today. Uh, but for the most part, uh, let's get right to it. Now, you know, I like talking about dating in India, even though I am married right now, because it's fascinating to me, man. I have a lot of friends. I myself struggled with dating in this country. It was like, oh, cute accent. And then five years later, why do you still have that stupid accent? <laughs> so I am taking your questions now. Question number one. Okay. Uh, from getting straight to it this week, because we have a nice open dialogue. So what are the guys, well, sorry, question number one, why are guys in two extremes either really clingy or really emotionally stunted? Ah, madam, I feel your pain. I know exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Although I have never personally been the clingy one. Uh, most guys, yes, are generally lovers, as we say. We're like, we all have that friend who always has a girlfriend. And even though he acts cool and he acts macho and he plays football and he's like freaking Manchester United and for Arsenal and where do you live? By Penhali and like whatever, all that stuff. Super machismo, super dude. But in reality, a lot of that is a front because that same guy in your college or at work, if you hear him talking to his girlfriend and he's like 25, he's like, yeah, baby, I love you, baby. <laughs> I remember... In college, we had this friend who is now an Air Force pilot, by the way, uh, in America. But he would like so tough, tattoos, ripped, all that stuff, and like just chewing tobacco and doing all that things. And then, and then we heard him on the phone once late at night when he didn't realize that we could hear him. And he was like, did you catch it, baby? Did you catch it? <laughs> He's like blowing this girl kisses on like 2003 uh, you know, cell phone plans. And it was just too funny back in those days. So why are two guys in either extremes? Well, number one, uh, the guys who are longing for companionship way more than just, you know, I want to get some or whatever, uh, you know, they, they're full on and, and there's good and bads to that. Okay. A lot of guys who want to know where this is going or, you know, ladies, maybe to you, that guy feels like the chick because he's just way too emotional and way too attached. Um, those guys, I mean, just as quickly as they get into it, if it doesn't go anywhere, they will literally jump to another girlfriend and do the same thing all over again within like a minute. Cause those guys cannot be alone. I don't know the psychology. I don't know if it's their parents didn't love them or their parents love them too much, or they're an only child or whatnot. But yes, I agree with you for, for me personally, I was never the type of guy who always wanted a girlfriend. I was never the type of guy who was always, I mean, let's be honest here, folks. All of us, and I mean all of us, in middle class India, upper class, lower class, middle class, anywhere in the world, we all would like companionship, all right? Even the introverts want somebody to read books at home with together, okay? So, um, I mean, I wouldn't really look at it as, as a bad thing, uh, you know, if if you find, like, here's the funny thing about women and men, but, you know, women are like, I just, I want a guy who's, like, really sensitive, but also manly. I want a guy who's, like, not too attached to me, but also puts me at the center of the universe. What? You know what I mean? Like, you can't have it both ways, ladies. So, in today's world, with the Tinder and the internet, where, uh, you know, a lot of us growing up, dude, it's never been more confusing 
uh, for a young person because when I was growing up, that when I was rising, that sounds weird. Uh, when I was coming of age, that sounds even weirder. Okay. Uh, you know, we were basically blasted with Hollywood and Bollywood telling us how things should be. And by that, I mean, we thought you walk into a nightclub and you get some, and then you do that for all your 20s. And then randomly, some beautiful girl, Bollywood takes over, some beautiful girl who, I mean, here's the funny thing about India, you know, the irony of India. And I know I went off on a tangent about uh, your question, miss, but uh, India is a place, getting it real here for a bit, where like guys want to sleep around with like 20, 30 women before marriage, but then when they want to get married, they want somebody who's never been with anybody and yada, yada. And it's just so, I mean, it's not like, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. It's not realistic and you can't have it both ways. So here's the thing. Okay. There's a lot of guys who are clingy. There's a lot of guys who on the flip side, like I just said, get stuck with the movies. And, you know, if you look at the movies, either the Super Romeo 5500 Days of Summer, Summer, Come Back. That's a great movie, by the way. I, one of my, the only rom-coms I liked was 500 Days of Summer. Um, or they're the flip side where they're just like Johnny, same actor, actually, I think, was in a movie called Don Juan or Don John with Scarlett Johansson, where he's just a big player addicted to watching adult movies and that sort of stuff. So... Most of us men, despite what we say, despite saying we're figuring it out, we are, you know how guys like to tease women that they're brainwashed by the cosmetics industry or by rom-coms? We are just as brainwashed by hip-hop videos, by sports and athletics, and by Bollywood or Hollywood movies and all that stuff. So um, I think most guys, even the guys I know, like even the ones who are like, I could never get married, um, or the ones who are like, I just need to get married right away. <laughs> You know, and you know these people because you have that friend who was, you know, smoking up with you and drinking with you in high school and college. And then randomly at 24, he's like, it's time to get married. And you're like, what? Because that was in there the whole time. He was just trying to be somebody he's not in front of the boys. Right. So, uh, Miss, I know it's going to be difficult for you. Uh, and you're probably like 26. Why am I calling you Miss? But because um, I'm way older, you know what I mean? So, um a lot of guys are like this by no fault. Well, maybe some fault of their own because use your brain. But a lot of guys are like this because this is just how we've been taught. Just like a lot of you ladies have been taught certain things by the magazines and 18 ways to please your man. And, and what does he mean by that? What does he mean when he said, I don't want to talk about it right now? Was it was his dream about I was I was watching this shit sci fi movie yesterday called Lockdown or Total Recall. No, Total Recall, the new one, because I watched anything with a spaceship and Colin Farrell wakes up and he's like, he had a dream about his ex. And the girl was like, who are you dreaming about? And he's like, nobody, just myself. Because we know as men, if you're dreaming about something and it doesn't, and it doesn't, uh, you know, line up with your girl's expectations of your dream in your head that you had no control over, uh, you're at fault. So he was dreaming about his ex. Um, and then she's like, was it about me? <laughs> and so both of us, both sexes are actually emotionally stunted in a little way because of what pop culture has, to, has taught us. So, um, I mean, it is what it is, right? So the only shining thing I can tell you, Miss, in India especially, I mean, well, anywhere actually, is that most of us, whether we're trying to be a playboy or trying to be a lover boy, meaning trying to get married and you're the one for me and all that stuff is innately, we just know what we want. So we will fumble around, you know, I know plenty of guys who don't need to sleep around, but think they need to. And I know plenty of guys who probably need to explore, but they get married way too young. But the truth eventually comes out. And the same for you, miss, you know, so uh, hopefully it'll line up that way. I would just say, don't get, don't get too caught up in that. Of why are all the guys crap and Tinder is bull? Because you're not going to change anything, all right? Unless you want to start vlogging and, and tell guys how, uh, you know, how it should be. But these are like innate pop culture, psychological things that have been like, like, like dug down in there. So rather than get caught up in trying to change it, just slowly know how to navigate it. But you do you. And I know it's cliche, the right person uh, for you will know that, you know, like when I met my wife, I... <laughs> When I met my wife on the first date, I was like, I don't care about anything from this point on. If I could lock this, lock this one down. If, if, if this happens, I'd be more than happy. Like this is, this is the best. And I know it's cliche, but I, I found in my mid thirties that this could happen. So I'm telling you, if it could happen for me, it could happen for you. So I hope I answered your question. All I'm trying to say, TLDR, long story short, too long, didn't read, didn't, TLLL, TLTL, too long, didn't listen, 
long story short, is uh, just get, just continue to focus on you and the right person will pop up because you will just be the best version of yourself. So uh, next question. Woo, we got through it. All right. Question one at about eight minutes. So that was that was long. But uh, let me know, guys, by the way, if I'm answering your questions or if I'm not, because, uh, you know, feedback, I, I would love it. So second question. And I checked the recording here. Yeah, we're still going. Second question is how to approach an older girl. Okay, one guy had asked me a question out of the like 19 girls who messaged. So um, one guy had asked how to approach an older girl. Uh, you just do it, bro. Okay, my cousin, uh, you know, is, is younger. And I think he was dating some girls, dating a girl, a very serious, very sweet, very nice lady. Uh, lady. <laughs> she's not that old. She's younger than me. But um, my brother is married to somebody who's two years older than him. Um, here, okay, guys put like older women on a pedestal, pedestal, pedestal. Um, but think about it this way. Let's assume you're 25 right now. And you're probably seeing girls who are 24, 23 in India, probably down to 19, whatever, right? So you have that range of, you know, five to seven years. And you're like 23-year-old girls. Oh, my God. They'll, they'll believe anything. Now that I have this BS job at Microsoft where I'm making $2,000 or one lakh a month, I'm so cool. And they think I'm hot shit even though I just look at spreadsheets. Like, so imagine when you were 19, the same 23-year-old girl you probably put up on a pedestal. But now when you're 25, you're like, whoa, it's just like getting anybody my age and different people have different ways that they grow up and they value different things. On the same note, when you're 29, you're going to look at the 27 year old girl the way at 25, much differently you're looking at her now. So don't get caught up in it. Trust me. OK, we all have that friend who's like 25. And he's like, dude, I hooked up with like a 32 year old girl last night. Oh, my God. She's crazy, bro. The crazy. No, she's not. And no, you're not. OK. We're all the same. Generally, yes, we might want different things in life, given the age pressures, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, but yeah, if you're like 21, don't expect a 33-year-old girl to want to sit and watch Netflix all day. Okay, she's going to be asking you, yo. Um, actually, no, I think if you're a 33-year-old woman and you are dating a 21-year-old guy, you pretty much have to resign yourself to knowing that's just a time pass because... Uh, don't waste that guy's life. You know what I mean? I know this sounds harsh, but don't let, don't delude him into thinking he's so in love because then you'll be married to him and by 38 and he'll be 26 and he'll be like, I'm out of here. I still got a lot of time, you know? So I um, would not do that. Um, so how do you approach an older girl? Long story short, just do it. Okay, here. And there you go. Second question, much shorter. You just do it and you act like she's 25. All right. Third question we have. Do you think two single people of the opposite sex in India can remain friends because generally the guy because <laughs> generally the guy always screws up? Question three, can two single people remain friends because usually the guy always screws up? Mm, dude, I hate to I hate to sound insensitive and I hate to sound chauvinistic, but um, unless one of you is like already dating somebody else or unless like maybe you dated like uh, you know, his best friend or his brother or something like, eh, I don't really think so. Uh, I mean, there are certain situations, but if both of you have no reason not to see each other, you know, both of you are find each other attractive and both of you are like going out, it's eventually going to happen. You know, if, if it's like your brother's like ex-girlfriend, I would hope you don't, but if you're still friends, eh, whatever people have weird dynamics these days one of my closest friends here still hangs out with his brother's ex-girlfriend if i mean the brother doesn't because the brother has moved on but he's still like yeah she's cool she's also dating somebody else whatever you know and so like that immediately it's almost like you're related you wouldn't even bother but i i really don't think so um you know obviously moments can pass and like maybe i know i know plenty of my like younger cousins like he would have liked a girl their friends they hang out then she started dating a couple of his friends and then mentally he just kind of like wrote her off that way and vice versa. So it just became like, you can't really date somebody after she is telling you how good she like hooked up with your buddy. You know what I mean? And vice versa from the guy's point of view. So um, if all of that is, is not there and, and you two are just like looking at each other, like, wow, we're both single. Wow. Where are all the good people? Huh? You're abled. I'm abled or whatever. I mean, abled is a word, but like you're completely available. I'm completely available. Where do we find them? Ladies, a lot, a lot of times the guy is just waiting for the right time. And and I know it sounds, uh, it's not that the guys just want to get in your pants. He might want to marry you. You know what I mean? But um, 
And ladies, come on, you know, you know, I, I tease my wife about this all the time. She's like, I just thought when you messaged me that you wanted to go out for a drink or grab coffee or go on a date that we were just going as friend. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing wrong with saying uh, I like you. And there's nothing wrong. Ladies with saying I don't like you like that, but I would like to work with you. or I would like to be your friend. And guys, it's your responsibility to stick to that. Uh, but I, I don't think in the long term, two people who are fully single, who fully, you know, for no other reason could be into each other, uh, you know, wouldn't. So I don't really know if it's I, I know it sounds I, I'm not saying guys only want one thing. I'm just saying in practicality, as I've got older um, and, you know, it, I just don't see it. I, I don't know personally to 100 percent single people in my friend circle who have no reason not to be together, uh, who have not gotten together or at, or had a fling or whatever, you know? So, um, on the flip side, if you're saying a guy always screws it up and by that, you mean you have friends with a lot of these guys who want to take, see, here's one thing I noticed in India and I'll say, I take her for coffee and she complains to me about her ex-boyfriend and it's just so painful. And bro, you know, you're just screwing yourself and miss, you know, you're leading this guy on and me, I'm sorry for doing that accent, but that's just how I read it, you know? So, uh, I think ladies are smart enough to know in 2019 and as young as 18, 19, 20, if you're leading a guy on and, and girls, if it's like a, a guy friend of yours and I mean, you can tell because he looks away the second you're talking about some other guy who's cute because we're like, oh, yeah, oh, he's cute. Uh -huh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we try to like every time when you're 22 and then a girl is talking to you about, you know, how, how hot that date was or how big the, you know what I mean? Or, or whatever. You should see the look on these like under 25 year old guys faces who like don't know how to understand. Like I'm short circuiting like, oh, that's oh, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> Cause all he's like, shit, shit, shit. I like this girl, you know? So, um, I wouldn't say the guy always screws it up. I would just say that let's both be honest here that a single guy and a single girl who have no reason not to be together, that whole tension is going to be there, you know? So, um, I hope I answered your question. Um, let me know if I didn't. So, okay. Moving on here. Question number four. Um, hmm. <laughs> These are some good questions, by the way. I was reading these questions out to my wife, and she was like, yo, these are some good questions people have asked you. So um, why is it so? Why is it so difficult for men to admit it's either going somewhere or it's not? Wow. Why is it so difficult for men to admit it's either going somewhere or it's not? Woo, this is a good one. If anything, listen to this podcast just for this question. So... I'll be honest, okay? Uh, there was a quote I heard from a comedian, and he was like, uh, nobody gets a six-pack to share it with one person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that is true. Whether you're having a six-pack of beer or a six-pack of abs, and I don't know if I'll ever see my abs. I'm on day five of seven of a one-week keto binge that one of you guys sent me a diet plan for. But why is it so hard for men to admit it's either going somewhere or it's not? Truthful, a hurtful answer? Um a lot of guys, if they're not, if they're being kind of wishy-washy or they're saying they're busy continuously, and some guys might be busy, which is probably the reason you might like them in the first place, you know, because they were, you know, they got some cool article about their startup getting funding or they, you know, play an instrument or they're in a band or they're just a hot shot at work. There's something about that person aside from their innate appearance that is attractive to you. We can't admit it. It's not shallow, okay? People always are like, well, he was like you know, so famous and so successful and, you know, had all the looks and all the women around him. And then when we started dating, I just thought he would randomly just drop all of that. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Like, and, and I know I might sound insensitive, but a lot of guys, okay. Like if you're on like, and this lady has said by the fourth date, at least. So let me repeat, why is it so hard for men to admit it's either going somewhere or it's not at least by the fourth date? Uh, because, <laughs> He's kind of looking to see what else is out there. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he's trying to do better. Um, I mean, he is probably still swiping, you know, just like you might still be swiping. Maybe you're not. But I feel in every relationship generally, and, you know, uh, this is by no fault. It doesn't say anything about you or him. Um, but usually one person is in it more than the other. And sure, maybe you guys had a great conversation. I mean, it's kind of like if you're at a job interview, you know, 
You don't know what the employer is really thinking. Are they really excited about hiring you or are they not? And they don't know, are you looking at 95 other jobs or not, right? So these days, uh, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, it's kind of like, Ordering on Swiggy, you know what I mean? Ordering delivery. It used to be you would go to a restaurant, a.k.a. you would go to meet somebody either through your parents or in person or when you happen to have a chance encounter at work or at school. Um, but then it became uh, you would just scroll through the food items and you wouldn't even care as much and you would just eat whatever. <laughs> this is a horrible analogy. But I think usually for a lot of guys, um, until they're at that space uh, where, you know, at 21, a guy's going to commit if he's more the lover type or he's just never, uh, you know, had a girl really into him and he's just excited somebody finally is. Uh, whereas at 28, 30, you know, maybe all guys or even up to 35, maybe even 40, guys will be a lot more uh, responsive to like seeing where is this going. So I, I think I know it's a bitter pill to swallow, but if a guy is being wishy-washy by the fourth date or he's only messaging you late at night, Friday at 11 p.m., you already know your answer. You know what I mean? You're not going to convince him. Getting angry at him, uh, I know you want to, and I know you want to. And hell, my wife did the same thing to me, you know, when we were dating. So, and, but in my head, and this, and okay, let me let me let me backtrack a bit because I called myself out on my hypocrisy is. Uh, sometimes, all right, in my situation, when I was, uh, seeing my wife and I hope she doesn't mind that I share this is I was trying to be aloof because I was just, I just couldn't believe I found somebody like this. And I thought if I played it cool, even into my thirties that, uh, you know, because I was like so eager, uh, and you know, growing up in my twenties, I was taught to play it cool. Cause I read the game by, you know, one of these pickup artisty guys and stuff. So the point is, uh, some guys, yes, are trying to be aloof, but very, very rarely. But I try to do that with my wife. And then she was like, what's your deal? And I was like, no, I was not trying to scare you away. And she's like, by ignoring me. And I was like, mm hmm, good point. Yeah, I might be full of shit. So once we kind of got past that and I realized, OK, she's really into me. But because I knew I was really into her. But in the majority of cases, on the flip side, there have also been a lot of girls in my friends' lives uh, who have been like, where is this going and what's happening? And I don't get it. Uh, and that's just a way to push somebody away. So, um, I would not focus on it too much. I would not try to corner somebody and guys in the same way. I would not try to be an eager beaver and to be like, why are you not committing? Or why are you not saying anything? Um, after a point it's okay, but four dates, I mean, come on, you know, just cause you met very quickly, um, and maybe you hooked up very quickly, I would give it at least, uh, you know, two months. And I don't think that is unrealistic. Uh, you know, if you guys are going out a few times, then you guys hook up a few times, and then uh, you guys are messaging and you're sharing those moments and you're having the talk, as they said, on Friends, where you're really connecting and you're finding when you Netflix and chill or Amazon Prime and you know, I don't know, whatever their term is, right? Um, if you're finding, you'll know, dude, when you have a connection and you'll know when you think about that person a lot and you'll know when they say, I miss you and all that stuff. So, um, the bitter truth is why is it so hard for some guys to admit where it's going? Maybe, maybe they're just not there yet, you know, and you're not going to force it out of their hand. Um, unless, unless you know, like, and like in my wife's case, I mean, we both knew there was a very strong connection and 100% I admit to this day, she still makes funny about it. I didn't want to scare her off by being too eager because I was like in love with her within like, you know, a week. Oh, right. Um, so, uh, I think in most cases, guys, especially under 30 are just trying to, for lack of a better word, hook up with everything they can. And women, I know that's difficult because you're probably after 25 ready to like kind of lock some, not lock something down, but try to at least have a serious relationship, whether or not it goes, works out in the long term. So uh, if you are having a guy like that after seven, eight dates and he's being wishy-washy and flaky, call him out on his bullshit. You know what I mean? Be like, hey, um, either this goes somewhere or it doesn't um, and be ready for him to be like, all right, cool, take care. Um, but, but, but if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and he will then, you know, get into shape. And if he's not, you would have wasted years anyway. So just thank yourself that, all right, you had your two month thing. It did what it, it did, what it did. And now you can carry on with your life rather than marrying somebody or dating somebody longer where it was just a big waste of time. Because I think we've all been there too. I have a lot of friends where they're continuously 
and it's a really shitty place to be in. All right. Whew, that one was tough, you guys. All right. Where are we? Pop, up, up, up. Okay. Uh, this is okay. This one's kind of weird, but not weird. This one is very interesting, but it's just uh, not the usual stuff I hear. This is not about dating in India, but rather dating an Indian guy. Question number four. I think four. We were having a or five, whatever. We were having a great conversation, which he cut midway because he said he had to eat. <laughs> he had to eat lunch. We were having a great conversation, which he cut midway because he said he had to eat lunch. Sometimes you got to eat lunch. You know what I mean? There are some people. I know aunties and uncles who have to eat their lunch at 2 p.m. without fail every day. Sometimes you got to eat lunch, you know? But then he proceeded to send me a picture of what he did in the afternoon. So I don't think there was anything wrong and that legit he needed to have lunch. But since then, he's answering with haha, insert one response, what's going wrong? Uh, he wanted to get off the phone. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't think, dude, ladies, a lot of guys don't want to talk on the phone all day. It's not that they don't care about you. It's that they want to just do their shit. You know what I mean? Like once you've lived, once you've lived your whole life being single or doing things, you don't want to waste half the day chit chatting about pointless banter. I'm not saying someone to get to know you, or maybe he is at work, or maybe he has work to do, or maybe he has research to do on Google, or maybe he does want to watch Netflix. Who knows? I don't know the guy, right? But if you said he had to have lunch, number one, you got to have lunch. All right. Some people, especially, I don't want to be on the phone while I'm eating, especially if I'm getting to know you. And number two, like, yeah, he probably just wanted to get off the phone. So don't take it personally if a guy is like, I mean, he's still in contact. He's still messaging you. He probably doesn't want to talk to you for three hours a day. And look, doesn't mean he doesn't like you. It doesn't mean he doesn't want to hear about your day or your problems. But ladies, some of you will want to talk on the phone for nine hours a day. All right. And this may not be you, miss. I'm just saying, all right. But um, if he's saying ha ha, you know, or whatever, after having a great conversation um, for him to commit to that 30, 45 minute, two hour conversation that you guys had, be fully present, be fully there rather than like fumble in the kitchen while he's on the phone with you and being like, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like that takes time and effort. And so he used lunch as a segue or as a transition to get out of it. And now he's just letting you know, hey, I'm still here, but, uh, you know, can we pick this up later? Or can we have our one hour conversations once every two days, not every three days? And don't take that personally. I mean, do you really want a guy who's going to just talk to you for 50 hours? I mean, you know what's going to happen when you do this? All of this honeymoon stuff is going to fizzle. And then once you guys are finally in a place where you're comfortable, there'll be nothing left to talk about. Or he'll be like, you're driving me crazy. You know what I mean? So uh, no one ever talks about this, but you need to find somebody who's on your wavelength communication wise, because then you will have quality conversation and the girl or the guy might want to talk nonstop, but the guy will have to be prepared and be ready. So um, don't take it personally. And if he says, and yeah, some guys might just be like, look, I don't feel there's, there's anything to talk about. Like my wife once called me up when we were dating and I was like, no, I just had, we, we talked for an hour yesterday. So I, so I had nothing to say today aside from good morning and good evening. She's like, what? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, fine guys. And I'm telling the ladies to calm down guys. You also got to calm up if you will, or realize your girl wants some communication, but find a happy medium, but it's not ha ha one word answer. It's the end of the world with him. It's just that there has to be a happy medium for you guys to communicate. And if, if that person is not willing to budge, then you, you guys might be on different wavelengths. and Maybe it's not a good match after all. Or maybe you accept that as compromise and that you have your real conversations in the evening. Maybe he had a big day, long day at work. Maybe he's lazy. Maybe he's a slacker. But that's the point of dating, to get to know somebody, right? You're getting to know somebody. So why are you upset when there are speed bumps? And speed bumps are annoying, so I get why you're upset. But... Let it take its time and, you know, you'll know if this continues for six months or three months and you can't deal with it, then you know what to do. Ah, okay. Hmm. Why do men always think being boastful is a virtue? This is from one of our super fans. Hello, bro. I know who asked this question because I followed up. Uh, men think being boastful is a virtue because we were taught by the movies, as I mentioned before, that ego, ego is the enemy, but also ego is awesome because we got to be cool and the best and the hippest and society is like this anyways, right? I want the best. What's the best phone and the best movie to watch on Netflix and the best movie to watch from Hollywood and the best restaurant to eat at. So men naturally want to be the best. You know, we want to, 
We think, uh, I hate how people think having a fancy car or having a lot of money is being boastful or sorry, not, it is being boastful. Like I hate that they, they think they need to show it off. I hate these guys at the clubs who are like trying to brag about how many bottles they have because they're making up for the fact that they're not going to the gym or they're not exercising or all they do in life is the easy shit, which is getting drunk and spending money as opposed to trying to accomplish something and trying to, you know, be a real human being. You know what I mean? So, um, I think we just thought that we, we were just taught that's the way, just like we were taught a lot of money is the key to happiness, which a good amount of money will definitely make you happier, uh, you know, cause you're not broke, but, uh, we all know the truth by now. I hope so. Um, that's just, you know, we'll, we'll all learn probably by 35, but if you learn it earlier or you have family who teaches it to you, um, dude, the one thing women find super sexy, by the way, is not how much money a guy, a guy makes or how nice his car is, but how content and how happy he is and how passionate he is. So that's why all the artists who are broke pick up all the chicks, my man, because, you know, they're so passionate and driven about what they want to do that the girl finds that attractive as opposed to. I have a million dollars and I'm in a monthly developer group and we have a building and then uh, whatever. Right. So, mm, okay. Next wrapping it up here, guys, I'm going to try to finish up uh, and we can get some of the other questions later, but uh, let's see. It's very difficult to do dating in India. Um, what can women expect from dating in India? Because everyone is in this hookup culture. I'm going to combine this with the dating apps have changed what's the new age dating like? And I'm going to combine these two. And then I'm also going to answer a question about dating somebody 11 years older. Wow. Okay. So another super fan. Hello. I know who sent this. So, um, yes, Tinder has changed the culture and there goes the camera, uh, battery low. Okay. Well, well, that's that. So we lost the camera, but, uh, for the audio folks, here we go. So the hookup culture, the Tinder culture, it's, I mean, it's a guy's market in the sense that if you're getting a lot of matches, I mean, and if you're picking a guy who has a lot of matches, he is naturally going to go on a lot of dates because for the first time in his life, technology has opened up an avenue to him he never knew before. Um, it's a woman's, woman's uh, culture where uh, a girl can swipe on like 10 guys and get nine matches, but a guy can swipe on like, um, you know, uh, a hundred matches, a hundred swipes and get like one match. And so if you want more matches, gentlemen, uh, the key is not how to get more matches. That's not the question you got to ask is how do I get more matches? It's how do I become more attractive that people want to match with me? Meaning how do I get hobbies? How do I get in shape? Uh, how do I become, I mean, att attractiveness on Tinder, we are all like, you know, a commodity basically even if it's all attractive people by definition the girls will be looking at something else like oh all of these guys look like a football player you know from manchester united which is the look with the faux ha or whatever whatever those things are that they'll start reading the, reading the descriptions now your description's got to stand out it's basically seo all right sex engine optimization i think oh whoa, i just realized that dude someone should do like tinder seo that'd be like that could be an industry dude online profile seo you heard it here first on the Brody Num Num podcast, tag me with hashtag Tinder SEO. Um, so, hmm, the dating culture has changed, yes. Uh, so a lot of girls go straight to it. We're like, if you're looking to hook up, swipe left. Um, but I think now the dating apps are also getting more niche, niche, where, you know, Hinge or Bumble kind of put the ball in the girl's court or Tinder still has a reputation as the dating app. Um, but there's like fine dining dating apps and there's long-term dating apps and there's Jeevan Sati and Charlie.com. So, um, I mean, ladies, it's also okay to realize you're also just trying to hook up with somebody, right? So, um, mm, well, how, I mean, we all know this is nothing new, right? So I'm not going to tell you what you already know that it is tough out there. And I would just say be direct without kind of ruining the mood, if you know what I mean? Like, just like we're saying right now that everybody, yes, by good measure, should be more consentful and more honest and less creepy and less harassful because a lot of times guys don't realize what's the difference between coming on too strong or being annoying versus just trying to show you like somebody. So on the on the same note, ladies, um, you know, for lack of a better way, for lack of a better way of saying, don't try to like kill the chemistry or whatever, but tell a guy if you're not looking to waste time, even before you guys have found a connection, even if you're having a great 
flirty conversation and things are going well and you just don't want to ruin it by saying, hey, I just want you to know that, um, you know, I, I really think this is going, dude, women are way more ma- mature than men on these apps because they have to be. I'm not pandering to women. I'm just saying they need to be because at least they can point three months later to be like, look, on the third message I told you, I'm not looking to just have fun. So why are you being an idiot right now? You know, so I would say uh, the kind of courtship on these online apps have changed where you can still be flirty, still build chemistry, still kind of have that nuance and subtle sort of banter. But at the same time, if in your description or in your first 10 messages, not in like a heavy handed sort of way, you say, this is kind of what I want long term, dude. So, you know, hey, I just really don't want to get two months into this. And then you start saying, like, I'm just emotionally unavailable. Guys, women know about this rule where we say they're emotionally, we are emotionally unavailable. I just need to focus on my work, right? (laughs) God, we're so full of shit, dude. Oh, my God. I just need to really focus on my work. Um, so, uh, ladies, look, if a guy is really into you, he will make the time. All right. And if he's not, you have your answer, but that's what dating is all about. So, and guys, if she, you know, if you and her had a great thing, um, and you had a good four or five dates and then she just ghosted you or she disappeared, maybe you were bad in bed. I don't know. I mean, it's rarely ever that, by the way. All right. It's rarely ever that. I'm just teasing you. But uh, maybe she got back with her ex. Maybe she liked somebody else. Maybe she found found somebody better. Maybe she just went traveling, you know. But even if she went traveling, she would stay in touch with you. So um, there's all sorts of reasons uh, that you can like kind of like scratch your head on. It's kind of like looking at like Google Analytics. It's like, why is my traffic up or down? I don't know or the stock market, but you can focus on all those little ups and downs, or you can just do your shit, continue to make money, continue to invest, and you will notice an upward trend in the long term in six months, 12 months, two years. So I would say, uh, look at it like that. Do not check these things day to day because you can't. Dude, imagine if we talk to our parents or our siblings the way we talk to uh, you know, our potential partner. Like when my brother's like, you want to eat something? I'm like, no, you idiot. I'm fine. Cause I'm just busy and he forgets it. But then he would be like, well, what did he mean when he said it like that? And every word that came out, you're going to analyze like life's too short to get caught up in this stuff. So, um, the dating apps have changed for sure. Dating has changed. Being a human has changed. Business has changed. Marketing has changed. Everything in life is watching the movies has changed. You know, family has changed. Now I don't see my cousins even when I go to America because we Skype or I just see them on Facebook and that's good enough. And they don't find it rude because I like their post and all of life has changed. So um, new age dating is about, you know, trying to keep the chemistry going while still throwing stuffs in the while still adding ingredients to the beaker, uh, you know, without changing the reaction, if that makes sense. So. Um, find your formula, you know, but it, it's not rocket science at all. It's just um, being open and ladies, don't be afraid in a non-threatening kind of way because guys were kind of babies that way um, to call a guy out, you know, because once in a while we do need it. So uh, last question, last question. I've got about four more, but I know I ran long today. So last question is what are challenges if I am dating somebody 11 years older than me? Wow. And I know who sent this and she's not that old. I mean, she's fairly young. So um, what are challenges if I'm dating somebody 11 years older than me uh, and he spent 16 and he's a divorcee of two years and spent 16 years of a relationship with his ex-wife. He's still friends with her after being divorced. He sometimes compares me and his wife and I feel weird. Should I be worried about emotional baggage? Um... I mean, I think he's kind of a dick if he is comparing you to his ex-wife. That's really, I mean, if he's saying it like his ex-wife was crazy and he's just so not used to the fact that you're so cool or that you cook well or something, I don't know. Like, I don't know what your situation is, but if he's saying something like that, if he's trying to compare compare you in like a flattering way to you, um, I still don't think he should, but I wouldn't look into it as much as if he's comparing how you're annoying or how she, she was so chill. Well, why'd you break up with her then, you idiot, you know? And do they have kids? If they have kids, of course he's going to keep in touch with her because they have kids and they got to plan stuff like that. Um, But yeah, I mean, if you are in your 20s and you're dating somebody in their 30s who who was with somebody for 16 years and then ended it, uh, that's not a that's not an easy situation, miss. You know, so um, I wouldn't expect like. You know, a lot of guys in their 40s, late 30s, even 50s who then, you know, start dating somebody in their 20s or 30s, 
Um, th- and, and that girl in her 20s or 30s, she's in the prime of her life. You know what I mean? But for that guy, selfishly, he's probably been there, done that, and he's just looking to have some companionship. So I wouldn't expect to to convince, unless he's never been married, you know, but I wouldn't con- expect to, that this guy is going to marry you long term. I Maybe he will. Um, but if he's already doing stuff like comparing you to his ex, um, if if should you be worried about his emotional baggage? For sure, you know, just because somebody has emotional baggage, it may not be a bad thing, but it's okay to recognize they have it. So how much are you willing to deal with? You know, have you spoken to your parents about it? You know, parents will naturally be cautious because yes, of course you should be. So look, if you're a heart, if you are so in love and you want to make the mistakes and you just want to see where it goes or you're being optimistic that 20% of it might work out, there's a small chance, um, by all means, go ahead. Um, but I don't know, like, you know, 11 years older, you know, you're going to want to go to the bars and the clubs and go to your office parties and do things and watch new movies and go to the movies. He's just going to want to sit at home and be lazy and be on his laptop. You know what I mean? Or uh, just kind of faff around or maybe have, you know, a little bit of fun, go on some trips to Bali or Thailand or whatever. But 16 years of marriage, uh, if he, again, I don't know if he has kids or not, that would be a big deciding factor for me. And kids aren't baggage, uh, but you know what I mean? Like it definitely changes the equation. So the challenges are both of you are in different places in life. The challenges are you're never going to know what's really going on in his head because he is weighing the 16 years of everything he learned in that experience now with you. And he's also kind of a jackass, to be honest, if he's comparing you to his ex. Unless he's trying to do it in a flattering way, then he's just an idiot. So, um, because you shouldn't do that anyways. I do not want to be compared to my ladies, uh, to my ladies' exes. I do not want to be compared to, I know, I know, and vice versa. And if someone is doing that to you, uh, that's not right. Uh, and you wouldn't do that to them, right? You wouldn't constantly remind somebody of their pros or cons compared to an ex. Because why are you still thinking about that person, you know? So, yeah, maybe you do have baggage, right? So, um, I hope, uh, I know it's probably not the answer you wanted, and I am in no means a dating coach or dating expert. This is just life advice, and I have friends who have been in the situation where they, they are dating an older guy upwards of, like, they're 28 and he's 50, um, and you hear the same stuff and I tell them don't do it and they keep doing it. And a year later, they're like, yeah, you were right. So, um, but that's life, you know, we wear our, we wear our scars, you know, this is a badge of honor, these sorts of experiences. So let it be. Uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. You guys let me know if it was, or if it wasn't, I'm sorry, I ran long today, but dating in India, your questions, ladies, uh, let me know if you have more questions and I will get to another episode in the next month or two. Um, or if you want it a lot sooner. But uh, yeah, I've been Sanjay Manitala, Birdie Num Num Podcast. I'll see you guys next week. Hello. Birdie Num Num. Birdie Num Num. Birdie Num Num.